Hello and welcome to um, QoS video two, module nine. So that's where we're left off. So please don't forget to take your notes and submit them when we're all ready. All right, so let's talk about the different types of models that are out there. Please take a snapshot of this snippet. There's the best effort model. There's the integrated service model, which is called N in serve and there's the differentiated service the latest and the greatest uh, so the best effort is there's no guarantees and that is the most scalable the easiest one to do uh easy imp implementations uh, there's no really this is has nothing to do with qos in and out first come first serve all right integrated services this is very high qos ip packets are with guaranteed delivery. This one gives you guaranteed delivery. Um, it's, uh, it has the highest guarantee, but it's not scalable. It, it's very difficult to expand with this type of model. The differentiated uh, services, on the other hand, is definitely has high scalability and flexibility within when you are implementing with QoS. You can actually do integrated services and differentiated services together. All right. Um, so when it comes, to, let's go into the inserve. That's the best effort. The integrated service. We we'll talked about that. All right. So the benefits of integrated service. So please take a snapshot of this. Remember, this has the highest, uh, the highest scalability of QoS, um, but not as scalable. It's a lot of intensive resources that they do. It's stateful architecture. So it requires a lot of bandwidth, a lot of CPU power, um, a lot of memory reservation, um, but it guarantees you almost everything that you need. Differentiated services, on the other hand, is a model that specifies a simple, scalable mechanism for classifying and managing services. So uh, this is the more scalable technique. So please take a, take a snapshot of this. Uh, it provides many different levels of quality. You have a lot of flexibility of how to classify your um, your packets as they come in. All right. So let's look at the implementation of these techniques. Uh, okay. So the first thing you want to do is you want to avoid packet loss. So write the following down. How can you um, avoid packet loss? That's your big thing when it comes to quality of service. Okay. Here's what you need to write down. Increase the bandwidth, guarantee bandwidth, and increase the uh, buffer size if you can, and drop low priority packets before congestions occur. So get ahead of time and do all of that. All right. So you can do you can use any of these approaches, okay, to prevent drop sensitive applications. All right. QO QoS tools. So here's what you're going to do. Uh, there are three. Please take a snapshot of this, but take a snapshot of this, a snippet, but this is how it works. You got three different people working for you, right? Uh, before you let data, uh, when data comes in, they're going to meet the classification and marketing tool people. So when they come in, they're going to give you a mark. They're going to check to see who you are, and they'll give you a mark. You know, you'll have high priority or whatever. They write something on your ticket and they say, okay, go, depending on who you are and where you're coming from. They classify you. All right, that's all they do. They just classify. So there's a certain protocols that allow you just to classify. Then you meet the congestions of avoiding tool, and these are going to look at the classification and they're going to put you in your classes. Okay, they say, okay, oh, you're um, a voice. You go over here. You're in a different class. You're a video. You go to this class. You're uh, interactive uh, data. You go here and so on. So the congestions avoidance tools they'll use the mark marking or classification to put you in your different classes and then the congestion management he's the one that okay now that you are in your classes you know he's the one who manages and puts you on the trunk to go out all right so he goes if, if there is a, a priority class he goes in and he goes okay you guys come in let's go out 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 on the trunk and he's the one who controls it if there's traffic he tells the you know tells everybody to wait so there are like three different Type people are working for the QoS, three different types of tools. There's tools for classification and marking, 
tools, there's the congestions avoiding tools, and there's the congestion management tool. Those are the ones that work on the exit. This works on the entrance. This guy works inside to classify depending on what the market is. All right, so don't forget to take a snapshot of that. So here it is. So you're coming in, you're going to be either classified or marked, and then you give it, then you are. Uh, then you are placed in your queue, depending on your marking or classification. And then the management control people are the one that controls you to go out. All right. Um, so that's that. Now, when it comes to mark marking, it goes on your packet or on your uh, frame, right? So it's either on your layer two frame or on your packet. If it's on the layer two frame with Ethernet, it goes for an Ethernet frame, Y frame, or MPLS frame. Or if you're working on packets, it goes on layer three packet or IPv6 packets. Okay. On the Ethernet frame, it's called the class of service. On the Y frame, there's a TDI, traffic identifier. On the PLS, it's called the experimental. On the packet, it's called the IP precedence. Or, um, or sometimes we call it the differentiated services. This is the most and the greatest because it has more bits that we can actually classify our data much more. So this is for the packets that are going over the internet. All right, at layer two, if you remember with the IEEE 802.1x, when we uh, tag um, frames, we actually put the tag of the frame in here before they get on the trunk, right? Um, between the TL and the source um, address, the source MAC address. Uh, this is the length of the packet or the type of packet. So that's where we put the trunk. And, and that's where the tag goes in. And when, the, when this frame travels on the trunk, and, and when, they, uh, when they enter the, the switch on the other end, the tag is removed. So we'll use where the tagging is, where the, um, the IEEE 802 dot tagging, and we'll call it uh, the 802.1p, where we set up this. Uh, tag, but we'll call it a uh, uh, class of service. All right, so that's where the class of service is the bits, the tag, the classification, or the COS. It's placed just like the IEEE 802.1q. All right, to define who you are. There's a three PR priority number, pre number, there's the CFI one bit, and there's the VLAN ID, I guess. We're only using these three bits, by the way. That's it. And these are the three bits that are placed in there. Zero, zero means best effort. Zero, one means this. One, zero means this. So please take a shot of this. This is the QoS. And where is it placed? On the first three bits where the tag is. And it's called the IEEE 802.1p. All right? So you only have seven choices to classify the frame, the Ethernet frame. And it's called the class of service. All right, and again, it's right at layer three, it's called the type of service, right? In IPv6, it's called traffic class. So this is at layer three on the packet. And on the packet, you have a, you know, if it's, I, if it's IPP, the three pit presidents, and then you got four of them, then uh, five bits are not used. This is not used as much, the IP president, precedents, because you're only using three pits. Now, if you're using DSP, differentiated services, then you're using six bits for DSP codes and then ESN two bits. So please write that down all right, for the differentiated persons. Write the last two bullets down, right? And we'll take a look at each one of those. Um, with DSC, DSCP codes, you have 64 different choices that you can create with the six bits. Right? Then you have best effort, expedited, best effort. So write this down. Best effort, that means you have a zero value in the DSP. Expedited, you'll have zero, one, zero, one, and a short forwarding. And uh, we'll use the most significant five bits of the DSP, DSCP. So here's the different classes that you can have. Right? So this is your class. This is the drop preference, and this is your DSCP field. All right, and here's a typical setup of the, uh, the class sector bits. 
trust boundaries. Yes. So traffic should be classified and marked as close. Please write the following down. Let me repeat again. Uh, traffic should be classified and marked as close as to the source as te technically and administrative, administratively feasible. You want to put it as close as possible. You want to mark all your data just before they leave. The, student, the first router they hit, that's where you want to mark them, all right? As close as possible to the source. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, when we're talking about con congestions avoidance, uh, congestions avoidance, there are two. There is the, I want you to write the bottom two bullet points for congestion support, uh, avoidance. You have the weighted random early detections that allow for congestion avoidance on the network interfaces by providing a buffer management and allowing TCP traffic to decrease or thr throttle back before buffers are exhausted. The WRE helps avoid tail drops and maximize network use and TCP based application performance. Then you got shaping and policing. Uh, when it comes to shaping, okay, so please write that down. And these two reports here. So you got traffic like this, what, you know, all over the place, what they do, they queue it and they send it in a nice stream, right? They shape it. So it's not all over the place. You don't get these jitters all over the place, in, you know? So they fix the jitter. Uh, policing is like management. Okay, policing said, okay, you can't send data more than this much, right? So they limit the amount of data that you could be, uh, this is like a police, they say, oh, uh -uh, you can't go farther than that. And so if you shape it and you have a police, so you're gonna have a certain amount of data steady going at a, and it has a maximum amount of rate that it can transmit. All right, so ropes. On the last, before you before you finish, please write the following guidelines, right? Those three bullet points that you should remember whenever you're doing QoS. Enable queuing at every device in the path between the source and the destination. Classify and mark traffic as close as possible to the source. And shape and police traffic as follow, uh, a traffic flows uh, as close to their source as possible, right? So if you remember those, on how to do them, that's maybe for beyond the scope of this course. But if you remember that you need to do that, you know, the actual configuration and set that up is, is not a big deal. There's plenty of resources on the internet. And even if you get into the CCNP, uh, you'll be able to do stuff like that. All right, so, but for now, this is it for quality of service. So please write up all the notes that I asked you to and submit them and I'll see you on the next module.